Yo, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be showing you in depth how you can hit more shots in Brawl Stars. If you like this style of video, be sure to let me know in the comments so I can know whether or not I should keep doing more videos that explain as in depth as this one. I'll leave timestamps for everything either in the description or in the pinned comment so you guys can move around in the video wherever you want to. I don't want to waste your time though so let's get right into the video. So very briefly, I want to go over the shooting joystick. I wanted to go over this first because I knew people would have some questions about it. Like what's better, bigger, smaller on the, the shooting joystick. Honestly, I haven't found any noticeable difference in gameplay for this. Even when I try to test like the dead zone of it, it feels like the same for big and small. So... Honestly, I would just pick something that looks good to you visually and just work with something you're comfortable with. The next thing I want to talk about is three different types of aiming. And I'm not talking about auto aim, I'm talking about three different techniques you can use when you're manually aiming shots. And I've summed it up into three. Flicking, tracking, and holding. So for flicking, what you're going to do is, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you're just going to flick your thumb in the direction of the target. Like, it's just a quick flick. There's not a lot of, uh, like, lining up involved. You just see your target, and then you flick your thumb in that direction. Pretty self-explanatory, but some people can make it work really well. So for tracking, what you're going to do is you're going to use your white line to kind of follow the brawler. If they're trying to juke left and right, you're going to just follow them with the white the white aiming line. And then try to time and use like a little micro flick to, to just hit them when they move in the direction you're predicting. I like to use tracking when someone's behind a wall. Like if they're walking back and forth behind the wall, I like to use it to try to time when they pop out. Like you can kind of keep a tab on them and then try to time that moment they pop out. I think it's a really good strategy when you're trying to focus in on the movements of one brawler. So for holding, like these aren't official terms by the way, like I mean flicking and tracking seem pretty like self-explanatory, but holding, I, I just needed another verb, so that's kind of just what I went with. Anyway, for holding, what you're basically gonna do is you're gonna like hold an angle. Like you're gonna try to predict the brawler going back into your shot and you're going to try to time it with uh with their juke so like if someone's going back and forth up there rather than using your aim like aiming line to follow them you're going to keep it on one side of them and then you're just going to let it go when you think they're going to walk back into the shot again you're going to use all of these at some point so try to just Practice all of them, get comfortable with them, and then use what works best for you. Now, obviously, every brawler has different shot mechanics and shot patterns, and I'm not going to go over every single brawler to show you how to aim with them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to break them down into like general subcategories, and I'm going to give general tips on how to use each one of those categories. So the categories I came up with are shotgun and melee, Area of Effect, Single Fire, Burst Fire, and Lobbers. For Shotgun and Melee, I probably don't have to go too much into it. I'm going to keep it pretty brief. But some things you definitely want to remember are to know your max range. Because with Shotgun and Melee, you definitely do want to hit some chip shots every now and then. And then the other really important thing that actually people don't do enough is when you're close to somebody like obviously you're gonna auto aim a lot but you need to like walk toward your uh your opponent people too often will like use shotgun brawlers and be this far away thinking they're doing damage but you do a lot more damage if you just walk into them rather than like strafe next to them someone like primo doesn't matter as much but with the shotgun brawlers especially just make sure you're walking into the opponent when you can Again, area of effect, another one, I probably don't have to go over much, but this is going to be like your M's, your Tara, your Poco, your Sandy, that kind of thing. Even like Crow, where they have uh, like a wide spread of their shot. Mainly what you want to remember is to just know your range, like 
keep out of the enemy's range when you can. Like, they're not that hard to, to really use, but just try to remember, stay out of their range, keep at max range normally, and just try to use walls to your advantage. So for your single fire brawlers, these are going to be your brawlers like your snipers, B, Piper, Brock, Byron, Bell, but even brawlers like, like Carl or Spike that also have just the one projectile. You need to know what you're doing in situations with these brawlers. Like, you're gonna want to be a little bit unpredictable with your shots. And also be planning for your next shots. So, say this uh, shooter bot is a brawler over here. Like, if I'm just sitting here shooting the same spot for, like, 10 seconds straight. The odds are, if that's an enemy brawler, he's not gonna just walk into that. Like, you're not gonna hit that shot. If someone's like behind a wall or something, or you see an opportunity to move around, you want to be putting yourself in the best position to be able to hit more shots. There's also opportunities where if you have an advantage, you can put yourself in a better position to move up. Uh, there's positions where if you're lower on health and have a disadvantage, you still want to be like holding maybe a decent angle but not necessarily firing. Just stay a little bit unpredictable. Don't just keep firing shots if you're low HP because the enemy brawler will like predict you to keep shooting shots out of panic. So you still want to be in that unpredictable factor. Just try not to keep doing the same thing over and over because you're just not going to hit shots that way. They're going to see what's coming and they're just going to move out of the way. So for your burst fire brawlers, these are brawlers that are going to have multiple projectiles coming out at once. So like your Colt, your Rico, your 8-bit, even Bo, Leon, even Pam. A lot of the same tips uh, apply from single fire. Like positioning wise, you want to put yourself in a better position to hit shots. But with multiple projectiles coming out. You do want to be able to hit all of those shots in your clip. So, like, if you're only hitting, like, one shot, like, you don't want to block your shot off if possible. Like, you want to be able to hit all of your shots in a clip. So, if you're in the open and stuff, you're going to want to try to hit your entire clip, which makes sense. So, what you want to do with Burst Fire Brawlers is try to strafe with your enemy. So, like, if he's moving left, like, I'm sure most of you have heard this before, but if they're moving left, you want to try to move left with them at the time of your shot. Like, you don't always want to be predictable with your movement and stuff. You want to try to fire when you move back the other way sometimes, or just keep going in one direct. Like, don't always just, like, move back. And then shoot at the same time because that gets predictable. That's something you don't want when you're shooting shots. Like you don't want to be predictable on the other by the other team because then they're just gonna learn your patterns and start dodging. So try to be sure to strafe with your opponent with these multiple projectile brawlers, just in an attempt to hit all the shots in your clip. I'll go into more of the prediction stuff later. I just wanted to go over the the general tips for this right now. So last on the list, we have the Lobbers. There's not many in this category. It's Sprout, Dynamite, Tick, and Barley. For these Brawlers, mainly, I mean, Sprout's a little bit different, but Tick, uh, Tick, Mike, and Barley are pretty much going to be the same. You want to use them sort of like area denial at first until you get an advantage. So you don't always want to try to hit shots rather than just like block an area to stop them from going through it. So if this guy was trying to attack me, rather than trying to like hit him with the shot, I know he can't hit me with the shot until he comes through this choke point. Like it's not possible unless he's another thrower. So I'm going to try to shoot shots that are like between him and the area that he wants to go to. And that's basically what you want to do to hit shots with lobbers is like you want to control like I'm also not 
if he was like up against this wall, I'm not going to shoot a shot like up against this wall because you're wasting space that he could use to juke backwards. Like you want to use your shot to its fullest potential. So if he's on the side of this wall, that shot covers like that entire area. You don't ever want to use your shot when it's going to like be covered by a wall if possible. You want to use your shot to cover a whole area that they're going to get hit if they walk into it. Also, something I did want to address, because I've been asked it in my stream before, so I'm assuming other people will have like the same question, is where do you look when you're playing the game? So, much like shooting a real gun or like shooting a basketball or throwing a baseball, like you want to look at your target. Like you don't, when you're trying to hit shots, you want to focus on what the other team is doing and you want your movement and aiming to be more like instinctive. So like trying to dodge and move, you want to be more instinctive when you're trying to hit your shot. If you're not aiming a shot, you can look at yourself like your own brawler and like try to maneuver yourself around. But when you're going to hit a shot, you want to be looking at the other brawler. As dumb as that sounds, I mean, I've, I've been asked a question before, so I just wanted to make sure I can clear that up. Now that I've covered all the basic mechanics of shooting, I'm going to get into how to actually predict where your enemies are going to go. And the first thing I want to talk about is poke shots. So, when I'm talking about poke shots, it's generally the long range brawlers, which I'm sure most of you are wanting to hit more shots with, is long range brawlers. So poke shots are when you're at like max range, say this little mini mouse bot is a, another long range brawler. A poke shot is when you're sitting at max range and you're hitting shots like at max range and then poking out. Like you're hitting them with one shot and then like dipping away. For these shots, you need to try to predict which direction they're going to move in and when they're going to take a step forward. If someone's moving left to right, then you don't want to shoot like a full tile outside assuming they're going to go to the right because your shot has a width on it to where like you can hit the brawler with like half of your shot and it'll still hit that shot. So you don't need to lead shots as much as you think you might. Like you only need to lead these kind of shots. It depends on the projectile speed, but generally I wouldn't usually aim more than like the width of your shot outside of the uh, the brawler. Maybe like slightly more if it's a faster moving target. But generally, this is the the distance I would recommend. Is just like maybe a tile outside going back and forth, and then you're gonna want to try to predict when they're going to step forward. That is a little bit more difficult, but. You can move up and down and like try to try to time it. Like you gotta learn their patterns. It does take some getting used to. A lot of practice is involved. Just the one thing I don't recommend doing is trying to go more aggro than you have to. Because if someone's full HP on the other side and you're trying to like chase them down to try to get a kill, if you're running into them and they're able to back up. You're running into their shots while they're running away from yours. So, like, their shots are getting to you quicker than your shots are getting to them, if that makes sense. So, when you're not at max range just doing poke shots, odds are you're probably against someone, like, maybe mid-range to long-range-ish. And you've gotta just hit more shots than them. Obviously, you're gonna wanna be dodging shots... But this is where you want to start paying attention to juking patterns. So what I would not do in this situation is repeatedly firing off shots without paying attention to what the enemy is actually doing. Like, you want to get information before you shoot. Like, you want to have a plan for what you think they're going to do. Are they just running in a straight line? Do you think they're going to juke back? If you shoot one shot, 
if you hit them, do you think they're going to keep going or do you think they're going to move back? This stuff has to be going through your head every time you get in a battle like this. It does become pretty instinctive after a while, but for now, you're going to want to try to read their juking patterns. Like most people will just move left and right at like slightly lower trophy range. Some people will kind of mix it up and like do a little bit of juking back and forth. But you want to have your shot patterns trying to match their juking patterns. So like if they're moving left and right, as soon as they move like to the right, you want to take a shot to the right. And then right after that, no matter what your shot does, try a different pattern every time. Like if you hit the shot when they're going right, shoot a shot to the left. Even if you miss the shot when they're going right, shoot another shot to the left. You want to figure out what's hitting them and how they're responding to it and then trying to make adjustments based on what they're doing in response. I know it's a lot to think about and there's a lot of mind games involved, but something basic to think about is just watch them figure out how often they're juking and decide whether or not you want to prepare for them to keep moving in a straight line or if you're gonna prepare for them to juke so if you're against the brawler and they're going like like back and forth like a ton then when you line up your shot if they're walking to the left aim your shot behind them and then fire it if they juke back into it then like, you can do that until they decide that they don't want to keep juking back into the shots. If you come across a brawler that's, like, moving, like, in more straight lines and, like, not really moving back and forth as often, then just shoot in front of them. If they decide they want to start juking shots more, then that's when you turn back and you shoot behind them. Keep in mind, though, you only want to shoot maybe a tile behind them. You don't want to shoot too far behind them because some people will try to react to your shot, but they'll react a little bit late. So, like, if you were to shoot the shot, like, behind them too much, they're going to keep moving in one direction and then move back too late, and the shot's still going to be, like, behind them too far. The last big thing I want you to be thinking about is where does your opponent want to go? Sometimes that'll give you a ton of information. If you just like slow down and think, where will my opponent think that they're gonna get the most value out of going? So like, if someone is say standing here and they're low on HP, like, they're gonna try to go behind, like, this wall or something if you're down here shooting at them. So, like, odds are you're not gonna prepare for them to juke back out into the open. You know, like, maybe a higher level gameplay, they'll do that. That That's where it becomes more mind game stuff. But, like, the average player is gonna try to get to cover as fast as possible if they're down to lower HP. So use your shots to try to stop them from getting behind cover. And one more thing I feel like I should mention is some people will get like tilted and stuff, which is like understandable, but like, bro, you just gotta slow down, all right? Like at some points in the game, like you're gonna get in a panic mode. Sometimes you're not gonna be hitting all the shots that you want to be. You just need to calm down, like just slow down, take a breath in the game and just like readjust because at any point you can start hitting shots again and turn the tide of the match. So like, don't just give up because you're not hitting shots. Just take a breath, slow down and try to take the best shots you can. So now I'm just going to play a game with B with randoms. Hopefully matchmaking doesn't take too long, but I'm going to try to demonstrate everything that I've uh, talked about through all these tips. I'm gonna try to explain what's going through my head during like a game when I'm on a long range brawler and we're just gonna see what happens. 
All right, so we found a game. Uh, we're on Pinhole Punt right now. I can see I have a Sandy on my lane, so she doesn't or he doesn't have a lot of range. So I'm gonna be kind of playing it a little bit aggressive because I know he can't reach me. Um, this is what I mean, like where do they want to go? I know he wants to try to come to flank me over on this side. I'm trying to stop him from doing that. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to because he stunned me. And we don't really have lanes because I'm playing with randoms. Ideally, I want to be in the middle, but my uh, my gene looks like he wants to go middle. So I'm going to try to go to the side. Hopefully my Rico can pinch this with me. Nice. And there, I saw the, the Barley was going to assume I was going to shoot out to the left side there. So I knew he would try to go back in the bush to stay uh, alive. That's why I ended up shooting toward the middle rather than like where he was going. Alright, now I'm in this poke battle with Rico. I'm able to get the hit. Again, staying out of his range as much as possible. I know this Sandy's going to want to try to stay behind cover. The Barley might go up here. Oh, why did he give me the ball? Okay, well, I'm just going to heal up right now. Uh, we're back in the middle, going for control. I'm going to just aim a little bit in front of Sandy. Doesn't seem like he's... Uh... Okay, maybe he's starting to juke now. So I'm going to start shooting a little bit behind him. I'm not going to let him go to cover over there. We're able to get that kill. Not able to hit Barley, unfortunately. I think this is going to be GG. Unfortunately, my team did not clutch up. I decided to play like a few games with B, and I'm just going to cut down each game to like more important parts where you can kind of see what I'm focused on. Because a lot of points in the games wasn't really like demonstrating a lot. Right here, we're in against another B, so now you can see the poke shot at work. Like, right now, we're not, we're both not going to aggro, unfortunately. Um, we don't have a lane over here, so my, uh... My left side's getting rushed by Atara. Hopefully he can take these out. I can't keep my 3k. I don't know what this bow is really doing, but, I mean... Um, this is not looking great for us. Okay able to get the ball I think that Colt is gonna try to dip out eventually we're able to get that kill unfortunately I'm not able to get that Byron does clutch it up though luckily oh my lord oh I didn't think this would be this stressful but okay I know Colt's gonna try to back up now that he's low on HP because I hit him the first time I knew he would try to go back because he had nowhere else to go that he would have lived so I just assumed he was going to try to back up. Now he's full HP. I'm not going to rush him now because he can just like run straight at me and try to kill me. So I'm just going to stay alive back here. Wait for my team to help me. Able to get a peek shot out there. Hit him. Uh, Holt really is stuck back there. So we're just going to kill him. And a good goal by the bow there. Activating the tripwire. And we're going to go back to poking toward this B. I'm going to try to bait him a little bit forward. We're able to get a hit there. Able to hit Tara. I know she wants to go, like, below me. So that's why I'm, like, aiming here. I'm kind of waiting, anticipating for her to try to get uh, on the flank. I know she's going to come out eventually. So I'm just trying to time it. I know she wants to go below us, so I'm trying to kind of keep her above while my team respawns. Unfortunately, my whole team is going down, which is not good. I don't know if we're going to be able to stop that. Unfortunately, we are not, but we're going to be able to go into uh, we're going to be able to go into overtime here, which is a lot better for showing how to aim. I'm just going to be aiming. You see, like a tile outside, not even that, but. And, like, 
a majority of the shots are going to be hits as long as you're not aiming too far outside. You want to keep it pretty well narrow together. You don't want to go too far outside. I don't know why he just threw it straight at the... Regardless, you can see we're still hitting a pretty good amount of shots here. Regardless of how the game's actually going, we're hitting a good amount of shots. This is the poke battle. You can see I hit Colt there. Um, he's He's been juking a lot, so I keep shooting behind him, expecting him to juke more. And they were able to get that kill. Tara not juking a ton, so I felt pretty confident about that. Hopefully he can kill that and I can get B. And I'm going to try to split them. Not able to do it, unfortunately. And we're just going to end this one in a draw. I kind of threw that at the end, but... Regardless, you can see I did hit a ton of shots there. Just using everything I was trying to talk about, you know, keeping the shots like on a tile on each side, using poke shots at the beginning, uh, trying to stop the enemy where they want to go. Like everything was just demonstrated pretty well in that game. So I do think that is where I'm going to end it. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions, if you liked what I did here, if you like this style of video, what else you might want to see. Uh, appreciate y'all, love y'all, I hope to catch y'all in the next one. Peace out, dudes.